While there are many reasons for modern women to become mail order brides, a growing number of women are entering the industry due to poverty and limited job prospects in their home countries. Filipinas, for instance, face extreme gender discrimination in the job market. As a result, the only wage making options for many women in the Philippines are as migrant laborers or prostitutes. Being a mail order bride provides many impoverished women with the hope of securing a better future for themselves. The industry is also criticized for perpetuating cultural and gender based stereotypes and roles. Many international websites target men who are looking for wives who have so called traditional values, who seek to please their husbands, and who do not believe in divorce. One such customer indicated that he sought a mail order bride because Quote, he was unhappy with American women, whom he described as extremely independent, not appreciative, and too competitive. Unquote. Seriously, asshole. Other mail order agencies play up the stereotypes of their native women to entice potential husbands. Asian women, for instance, are often advertised as subservient and docile, others are marketed as exotic sex toys. Ironically, the women who are actively seeking a better life for themselves through these agencies may be the least likely to fit into these traditional stereotypes. When American men wed their mail order brides and find that they do not fit the stereotypes they had in mind, violence can result. Another problem with the industry is the imbalance of power and resources between prospective brides and husbands. Potential husbands are pouring money into the mail order bride agencies, and these businesses are financially motivated to put the needs of their male customers ahead of the well being of their brides. Men are paying customers and can generally demand any type of information they desire from the bride or her agency. Men have a certain amount of assurance that the information they are provided is true, since it's the agency's job to verify that a bride's information is accurate. On the other hand, brides are often desperate to get out of poverty, receive relatively little information about their potential husband, and do not have the resources to confirm that the information he has provided about himself is true. Industry proponents argue that there is no evidence that, quote, Spousal abuse, domestic violence, or other harm is any greater in marriages between couples who met through mail order bride agencies than other couples. Unquote. Moreover, industry supporters are able to point to multiple happy couples who met through mail order bride agencies. However, the nature of the industry creates an environment that exploits the needs of impoverished women, putting them in an environment that allows physical and emotional abuse to thrive. It is fair to say that the problems found in mail order bride marriages are not so different than those found in traditional marriages. However, this industry targets poor women who then find themselves in a new country, in a new culture, speaking a new language, within a totally different legal system, isolated from their family and friends, and financially dependent on their new husband. This gives brides little support and few resources if they should find themselves in an unhappy or dangerous marriage. Some countries have enacted legislation to address these problems on a national level, but little or no global regulation exists to protect the victims of the industry. It's important to bring up that the dark side of the mail order bride business is not just theoretical. There have been many documented instances of violence against mail order brides by their mates. Including murder. In 2006, President George W. Bush signed new legislation to protect mail order brides. This legislation was introduced by Washington State Representative Rick Larson and Senator Maria Cantwell in response to the murders of Anastasia King and Susanna Blackwell. Both women were mail order brides who were murdered by their husbands. The legislation provides safeguards and information for women who immigrate to the U.S. to marry Americans. 
one of the most important aspects of this legislation was the requirement to provide immigrating brides with a document outlining their rights under U.S. immigration law and domestic violence statutes. This information is also required to be provided in the woman's native language. Prospective brides must also be made aware of their potential spouse's criminal record, which is particularly important if the man has a history of domestic violence. The law also put an end to the so-called wife lottery. Previously, men could apply for as many foreign fiancé visas at one time as they wanted, and whichever bride responded first was the winner. Now, American men may only apply for one foreign fiancé visa at a time. For a full episode on Anastasia King and Raina Swierski, check out our feed on Patreon.com. This wraps up our episode on Mail Order Brides. Thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned after the credits for a few special thanks as we wrap up Season 1. Be sure to check out the Salacious History page on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at Salacious Hist. That's S-A-L-A-C-I-O-U-S-H-I-S-T. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps to get the word out about the show. This podcast is researched, written, recorded, edited, produced, and marketed all by me. So please... Show me some much-needed love and support by partnering with me on Patreon.com. If you have questions, corrections, or ideas for future episodes, you can email me at salacioushistory at gmail.com. While I am very proud of my one-woman operation, there are still many people I need to thank for helping make Season 1 of Salacious History possible. First, thank you to Pamela walker Dees for website support and for being my podcast sounding board. Thank you, Matt Duncan, for helping me balance my schedule and for being my biggest cheerleader. Thank you, Ruth Barry and Ted Willis, for your episode feedback. Thank you to the guys from the We Hate Movies podcast for making a joke about a show called Horny History and for encouraging me to take the idea and run with it when I reached out to them. And thank all of you for showing an interest in this little show and going on this journey with me. We will be back in a few months with Season 2. I'm Sarah Duncan. See you next time.